Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to our workshop um, on virtual engagement and redefining success. As always goes with <laughs> virtual things, we are having a little bit of tech issues. Um, and our co-presenter, Olu, uh, is having some difficulty unmuting. So while he's figuring that out, we'll just get started because um, time is short. Um, so thank you all for joining. Uh, and we'll start with some introductions. So I'd like to introduce you first to um, my co-presenter, Jamie. Hi, everyone. Um, I recognize a few familiar faces and names here from the screen, so it's great to see some new faces as well. Um, my name is Jamie Vieira, and I work at Jay's Care Foundation as a program specialist. Um, so in the last few months of crazy COVID times, a large part of my role has been adapting our in-person programming to online and trying to spread the word and knowledge of what we've been able to do to other facilitators, other camp staff, et cetera. So that's kind of been my niche in the last little bit. Um, I'm gonna test to see if Olu has his mic working here. If not, I'm gonna pass it off to Jackie. Yeah, it's okay, we'll, we'll get him going. Um... My name is Jackie Robinson. I am the coordinator of research and evaluation at Launchpad. Um, I get the opportunity to um, evaluate and, and showcase the incredible work that our coaches and youth mentors and um, just staff in general uh, do to put the needs of our youth members first. Um, and we do that using we attempt to do that anyways, using uh, accessible strength-based evaluation frameworks that uh, align with our theory of change. Um, and then I'll take a moment to just introduce Olu while he's trying to figure it out. But Olu is a youth mentor at MLSC Launchpad as well. He is um, incredible at connecting with youth and um, really driving those relationships. Olu, is your microphone working? I don't want to speak for you. <laughs> no? We're getting him going. We probably get him going. It, oh, this always happens, right? Um, it's the human aspect of virtual programming. Uh, uh, Olu is, like I said, is a youth mentor, and he is uh, so great at connecting with our youth and creating trusting relationships. So it's great to see you guys. Please drop in the chat what organization you're from, what your name is, what you do, so we can get to know who's better, uh, who is actually in our workshop and engaging with us. Um, so Alessia already went through rules of engagement. We just want to quickly touch on them here. Um, this workshop is on engagement. So the main driver of engagement is actually being able to see who you're talking to. So if you feel comfortable, please have your video on. We will have our videos on um, doing that as well. Uh, take a moment to update your name of how you want to be addressed. That's totally up to you what you put that as and stay on mute unless you're asking a question. Um, you can use the chat at any time to ask questions or leave comments. Well, we won't be able to get to all the questions uh, in the limited time frame that we have, but we will send out a post email um, to each one of you that have attended um, to try and answer your questions as best as we possibly can. We're also all available for coffee chats. So please, if you want to have a, have a chat with us about some things that we've just discussed or about the only your own challenges that you're having in building out virtual programming, we are open to have any and all conversations that you guys want to have. So please take advantage of that. Um, and please use the reactions. We can't all use our voices, unfortunately, on Zoom or it would be chaos, but we can find out if you are liking what we're saying, if you use that thumbs up or that heart. Um, and just as a heads up, we are going to be doing some activities. So please um, participate those in any way that you're able, whatever way you feel comfortable with. So we're hoping that by the end of this work, feel better prepared to engage with youth virtually establish trust and relationships with youth and that you'll be able to you'll be ready to build out evaluation frameworks around that trust and relationship that really focuses on meeting youth where they're at so to get us started i want to take us back to march <laughs> when the whole world changed and the context of all the work that we do was unrecognizable um, we had to completely reimagine what youth sport programming looked like and that it was going to be completely different when we couldn't be in the same physical space as them. Both of our organizations, Launchpad and Jay's Care, realized that we needed to buy those quick wins youth just to show up for our Zoom chats. Uh, and for the rest of this webinar, we're going to go over 
some strategies and activities that will help you achieve these quick, we'll wrap up this workshop by going over how you uh, actually build out an assessment around those quick wins. So many times virtual educators, as virtual ed educators, we get so focused on fluff. Uh, we get excited about new stuff that we have to do and all the logistics that we're responsible for, but we frequently forget to actually go back to the basics. So if we actually take a minute before each and every session that we have with youth to think about what really matters. What our goal is and what will make the session a success. We can add, think about this like building a house. You start with your foundation and then you add the roof and then you add your windows and doors. With virtual programming, this can look like starting with your foundation and your walls getting youth to feel like they belong, feel safe, that coaches like them and that they have fun. Those are essential components to building your house. Without a solid foundation, your everything that you've put on top of it will fall down in a quick wind, right? It, you, you don't have anything solid to build off of. From there, um, from there, you put on the roof. And really this is about youth trusting your coaches, knowing that they're gonna notice when you learn something new and do something good, or if you aren't in program, they're gonna notice and they're gonna reach out. And then from there, you install your windows and your doors. And these are the extra and the attitude you bring as a coach to your programs. All these things coming together help you to thrive in, virtual, in creating virtual programs. That these are the preconditions to having a program that works. Thanks, Jackie. So um, over the last few months, both MLSC and Days Care have been just working our butts off to try to impact as many as possible. And um, I know we've learned a lot. I'm sure just like all of you experts in the room, you've learned a lot over the last few months. What you started in March looks nothing like what you have going on today. Um, but I want to just set the stage a little bit, just like Jackie did with the house, start our foundation of virtual educators. So I want just to remind everybody to be kind to yourself. It's tough. Everybody's going through it. So many people are completely pivoting what worked before into what could or maybe won't work here in a virtual platform. So I want to remind everybody to be kind to yourself. And I want to share with you two quick quotes from one a virtual educator from Jay's Care, uh, what she learned along the way. And another is actually from a student when we did our post um, programming survey. So from a teacher or online virtual educator perspective, learning to teach online is a little bit like learning to skate. So you don't just tie your skates on the first day and glide like an Olympian, you fall a lot and it can feel awkward and uncomfortable for a while. You feel self-conscious and a little bit like a baby, but if you really commit to it, then after a while you can find your glide. And a few months later, you can't believe there was ever a time that you didn't skate. And again, from our middle school student, if I could offer teachers some advice about how to make virtual school work, it would be this. Don't worry about the curriculum for the first few weeks. Just worry about making the class feel safe and fun. Help us get to know each other. Help us feel like virtual class is a place where we are welcomed, wanted, and accepted. And that will be a huge difference for the rest of the year. So that's in perspective from a virtual teacher, but we can all learn from that as virtual educators. Whatever that main goal was before in person, kind of have to flip now and redefine what success looks like for us. And that's all about our session today. But another thing just to set the framework is if you don't believe online virtual programs can work, why on earth would kids come? Why would you and know that it can work? So we have a few quotes here just from, again, our surveys about what parents are saying. And you may not feel like you're doing your best work. You may feel like you're falling on ice all the time, day after day. But I promise you, you just showing up for those kids, you trying, you making them meet friends, it's working. So believe that it can work. So now we're going to go into how it looks so different now from what it was before to working online and a few things to remember as an online facilitator. So the first one is that your tone, your pace, and your voice are different. 
So if you were a gym coach and you were screaming, hey, let's go, it's our time, let's go, everybody get ready, we're doing this activity. That doesn't work online. You're gonna scare kids, you're gonna scream in their ears, they're not gonna enjoy themselves. But it's the same if you have a really soft voice and you really want everybody to feel welcome and you wanna make it calm and you slow your voice down, your pace is really relaxed. We might put people to sleep. So you have to work on what tone works for you, what pace works for you, and work on those flux fluctuations so that you're not screaming at kids, getting them all hyped up, but you're also not putting them to sleep either. The next one is, is you just lost all of your body language. So now they're only looking at your face. So you have to work to bring your hands involved when you're talking and really work with your hands to be animated, but you also have to use as much emotion with your face as possible. So as much as you can, not long when students are talking. Get excited when you're excited with your face or show that it's feeding off of, it's just through your face or what's shoulders up. So use your hands as much as possible and show them with your face that you care and that you're listening. The last one here, it's all about eye contact. So if anybody watches The Office, you know those moments when Jim kind of like looks to the camera, that's what you have to do as a virtual educator. So we're all sitting here looking, I'm sure at the PowerPoint presentation, or the little screens of the person who's talking, but it doesn't actually look like they're looking at me who's speaking because nobody's actually looking at the camera. So what I'm gonna and stare at that camera and smile. Just give a smile. Look at that. Beautiful smiles in the group here. Excellent. Okay. Taking just a few seconds every once in a while to actually look at that camera makes it the kids feel like you're looking at them and you're not looking at your second screen at the PowerPoint. You're not looking at somebody else. You are focused on what they are saying and that you care and you want to be there for them. The last thing I'm going to point out about what is just a little bit different is actually there was this study called the Nonverbal Exchange Study. And they brought four random people in a room at a time and they didn't say anything. They didn't do anything, but yet at the end of 20 minutes, everybody had similar moods. Everybody had the same heart rate and everybody had the same blood pressure. And it was because humans tend to go to the most emotionally dominant person. So, if you've ever gone to a meeting where you walk in the room and somebody is so grumpy and they're like, oh my God, why are we even having this meeting? I can't believe we're here. This is such a waste of time. If you walked in in a relatively good mood, I bet you eventually in that meeting, you got brought down, that you thought negative, that you were thinking, yeah, I've got other things I could be doing. This person's right. Because that was the most emotionally dumb person in the room and people match that energy. So in virtual learning, you have to be the most emotionally dominant person. You have to bring the energy. You have to drown out the negativity. You have to bring the fun, bring the spirit so that everybody can come up to your emotional dominance and the best programming ever. And how we're going to do that is through a game. And I think all is back. Hi, everybody. Uh, sorry about that. There's something going on with, with the Wi-Fi. So... I uh, had to switch devices, um, so we'll see how long this stays in for. Um, glad everybody's here. Thank you guys for coming. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is actually very similar to our warm-up gated as a big group at the beginning. So this is called the scavenger hunt, and this is something where at Launchpad, we've realized the kids really love this activity. It's a way for them to show off, show things that they're proud of. It's a way for them to share and actually show you something that they want you to see instead of the background that you can see accidentally because of where they're at. So what we're going to do that's a little bit different than before because we have a little bit of a smaller group is that when I ask you to go locate something, this time is actually going to have a little bit of meaning to you. And if you're willing, if you can, I'll just ask you to share what the item you brought, what it means to you. Okay, so if we're ready, let me see some thumbs up. You can use your actual thumbs or the reaction buttons. Amazing, you guys are fantastic. Um, so the first thing I would like you guys to grab is something that you're proud of. Okay. 
know, so take your time. You don't have to rush it. Find something and then put it up on the screen. For those of you with your cameras off, feel free to type into the chat what you've brought or turn your camera on if you feel comfortable. All right, fantastic. So I'm gonna open the floor. If there's anybody who wants to share immediately, just raise your hand in, in the chat or put up a, a clapping or a thumbs up and I'll, and I'll pick you as we go through. All right. All right, Abby, and go for it. I see you in the chat. I hope I said that correctly. Yeah, you got it right on to, off the right off the bat. Good start. So uh, hi everyone, I'm Abby. Ann. Uh, for my object, I chose this mask I made. So uh, as a little hobby that I picked up over the pandemic, I started uh, cosplaying and whatnot. And so then this mask here, I made it myself out of like Dollarama foam. So it took me about four days to get it right. And I went through uh, enough foam pads to fill up like a kindergarten classroom, I guess, but eventually I got it right. And so I'm really proud of this little uh, self-made DIY costume piece. I just want to share that. Yeah, that's amazing, man. Appreciate you sharing that. Uh, Katarina, I saw that you had your hand up, your hand raised. Would you yeah, still sure, like to share? Sure. Uh, so I have my convocation box that I got in the mail. Um, so I finished my undergrad at York in, when was it? April, I guess. I didn't have a real convocation, but I did have like a virtual kind of convocation. So that's uh, the thing that I wanted to share. Awesome. Congratulations, man. Graduation is huge. Uh, do, I have, do I have anybody else who really wants to share? Jackie, I see you're holding something here. What, what oh, yeah. Was that? Oh, yeah. I was hoping you'd pick on me. <laughs> so this is Sequence, of which we have played a lot of it in quarantine, or whatever you want to call this. And I am the house champ in Sequence. So I'm very proud of that. That's amazing. That's a really fun game. I honestly just learned about it last year. So um, I think... Julie, I saw you holding something up a little while back, if you want to share that. Sorry, this is a picture of my daughter. She just recently graduated from the University of Guelph, so I'm very proud of her. Awesome. Congratulations. Congratulations. Okay, so that would be the first round, and this gets everybody talking. This gets them sharing. This gets them excited for what's coming next. So then the next thing I would ask is, grab something that brought you the most fun this week. And then they would go away. Awesome. All right, I see a couple of things. Um, are you guys all right if I just pick on people who are showing things or do you guys want to volunteer again? I can go. All right, Kylie, go for it. Cool. I don't have it in front of me, but as soon as you said that, I thought of a game. Jackie, you inspired me. I played this game over the weekend and it's called Spot It. If you haven't played it, it's like quick reaction game. It's so fun. I don't own it. It was my friend. So I ordered it. And it's going to Nova Scotia because I fly home to Nova Scotia tomorrow. So I've ordered it. So I'm ready for the holidays with that. If you need a game, Jackie, a new one too, check it out. I second that. That game is amazing. We used to play that here at Launchpad. It got competitive. Yeah, and it's a brain game too. It's like your reaction and like there's yelling. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> um. Justin, you look like you have a bundle of fun in your hands right there, man. This is Henry. Um, we go trail running every morning and we started a winter scavenger hunt uh, virtual running event on uh, December 1st. So we've been doing that every morning together and it's been really fun to get out and do some more creative runs. So it's been 
pretty good. So he's a he's a good partner to have during uh, the pandemic. That's amazing, man. That's fantastic. Uh, anybody else want to jump in? Uh, I can go over. Okay, go for it, Sonia. So uh, mine is a soccer ball, which is my my passion sport. And uh, it was a couple weeks ago, we had a virtual PA day. Um, and I don't often get a chance to pop into programs, but it was so, so much fun and really brightened my week up a whole lot. Awesome. I'm glad to hear that. I think we got time for one more share if anybody wants to jump in. Go for it. So uh, I have a random shoe with me. So at, so I'm from Toronto City Rugby Foundation. We host like uh, rugby demos with kids and whatnot. And so then most kids don't have rugby balls on hand. I don't have rugby ball on hand, but I had to teach them how to throw rugby ball. So I was like, well, shoot, I don't, ha I don't have anything. So I was like, let's get creative. And I just grabbed the shoe in the middle of the uh, list. I'm like, all right, kids, this is how you hold a rugby ball. So that was it. That's amazing, man. And that's one thing about this quarantine. It lets, shows you just how creative you can be, man. Um, so once again, everybody, thank you so much for, for playing this game with me and being so open and sharing. Um, honestly, I feel like I'm starting to, to get to know you guys a little bit better. So I really, really appreciate that. Um, so moving on, this is going to really segue into, honestly, in my opinion, the most important part a virtual program. Um, honestly, it's just in, in a very dry way, just kind of forget the goals that you had before when you were really in a program where at Launchpad, we do it in, in nine week sessions where we were kind of like, we want to get them from week one where maybe they have no skills to week nine where they can go through a, a basic drill set, no problem. Whereas now it's just about getting come, getting them to come back, giving them a place to escape. But basically the way we've done that is just by giving them a lot more time just to speak and talk and be weird. And like when I was doing a virtual program last night, actually, and there was a brother and sister who, they, they were just dancing on the screens, dancing back and forth. And I'm like, is there any music playing? Or they're like, let me hear it. And they're like, no, this is just what we do. So then we spent like a good minute and a half just doing this. And it was because they had their camera on by accident. They, they didn't realize it. So I was like, what are you guys doing? And then we all joined them and then for the first program, which was basically like our, our like, yes, for, for the whole program, right? So that's kind of how these programs are just unfolding is just goals that should not really be goals are our goals right now. It's getting them to use the chat if they don't have a camera or getting them to flash the camera on for half a second or getting them to actually say their name or ask a question or say they don't understand something or even just let them learn something about you, right? Um, like we have a lot of, ask them like this perfectly constructed question that you think will elicit a great response and they're like yeah no I think so but then you know it's just all about just kind of like poking and and prodding and just like pulling that information out and being as positive as you can about it right or just saying things that are completely outlandish to to get them to to share a little bit um I, I speak in examples which you guys are, are really gonna gonna notice just about now but again uh, last, on, on Tuesday, um, there was a, a youth in my program and she was telling me that she, she does nothing all day long, just nothing. So what do you mean you do nothing? She's like, I just sit. I say, you sit and you stare at the wall and, you know, I just keep saying all these older that, you know, did you know that the veins in your feet are different and all these different kind of things. So I know you guys all know these tips and tricks and I finally got them to share a little bit more. And that helps them engage in the program, even if their cameras aren't off. Um, so yeah, um, after once once you do all these things, like the program is never gonna 
going to look the same. Like, no matter what you do, some kids are not going to turn their camera on at all. And I can tell you that's true because I'm a university student and it did not matter how many times my professor asked me to put that camera on, it was not going on. Right. And, and that had nothing to do with my professor. You know, that was just me. I don't want them seeing where I live. I don't want them seeing how deeply I'm slouching in my couch right now. So like there's, there's a whole lot of reasons why the camera doesn't go on and, and don't let that take away from, from what you're doing. Um, so the next thing we're, we're going to do is, is what we're going to call a chat challenge. Right. So what I want everybody to do, if you're comfortable, if you're able, is just in the chat, I want you guys to type out a bunch of ideas that you think can help kids connect with each other virtually. And then in about 30 seconds, I'm gonna ask you guys just to press enter so that at that 30 seconds, the chat just boom, fills up with just ideas and ideas and ideas. All right, so take the 30 seconds now, just start typing in ideas. And then I'm gonna come back and say, I don't know, send or press it or I'll try and come up with something creative. And then we'll, we'll dump all these resources into the chat right away. Uh, so yeah, go for it. All right, so in five seconds, I want everyone just to, to crack enter on it. Three, two, one, go. All right, this is great. I think if everybody has an opportunity to read through that chat, you just got a bank of awesome ideas that you can help kids connect. And we know how important setting that foundation is, making kids feel safe, let them connect to one each other. So we're gonna play a game again. We're always gonna put our kid hat on here and actually play some of these games. So this game is called Reverse Charades. So I hope that enough of you feel comfortable to turn your camera on. Um, I'm actually going to ask Jackie to stop sharing the PowerPoint, if that's okay. Um, and we're going to play reverse charades. So with typical charades, one person is acting something out. They kind of get put on the spot, right? If someone's not comfortable, if, you don't, if you're a little shy, this is reverse. So I'm going to ask one person to close their eyes and everybody else is going to get something to act out. And all of us as a group are going to act out that thing until the person guesses what it is correctly. That way, kids feel safe. They're all acting silly. They're all acting this thing out. And it kind of breaks the ice for the next activity where maybe they do want to do something on their own. But it's not expected of them. Everyone's going to be silly. Everyone's going to put their kid hat on. So I hope that you turn their cameras on, put your kid hat on for me. And I hope we have one brave volunteer who wants to be the person who guesses what it is. So I have one volunteer. Yes, Julie. Okay, so I'm gonna get Julie to close her eyes and I'm gonna show everybody this terrible drawing, okay? All right, so Julie, I'm gonna get you to unmute yourself, open your eyes and everybody start acting. Put us out of the misery, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are we at the zoo? Are we? Oh, we're a cat. We're, we're a cat. Yes, that was excellent. Okay, and now I'm gonna pick on Olu. Who was the best actor in our group? Who do you think 
to the best cat, Olaf. I know I really put you on the spot. You were very muted, but I put you on the spot there. Who do you think was our this, best this was actor tough, or actor? But I, honestly, I'll say Justin stood out to me on that one because I copied it. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. But I was like, I was like All what right. doing? <laughs> Justin, if you feel comfortable, do you mind being it? I'll get you to close your eyes here. Yeah, sure. I'm okay with it. Wonderful. All right. Justin's going to close his eyes and everyone's going to act this bad boy out. All right, ready? Three, two, one. All right, Justin, open your eyes. Elephant. Elephant, yes. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. Thank you, Julie, as well. So that is reverse charades. You can do it super quick. It just breaks the ice. It, everybody acts super silly in one space and hopefully allows for that connection piece, that safety piece, that it's okay to do things a little bit different. And again, this one goes into our next theme. So we wanna make sure everything is fun. Kids are not gonna come back to virtual programming if you don't make it fun. And some quick, easy ways to make it fun is to add costumes. So if you turn off your camera, if I turned off my camera right now and suddenly came back with a wig and took on this different personality, every kid and even yourselves would be like, oh, this is awesome. She's making a fool out of herself. From this picture that you can see on the screen, it's actually from a Jay's Care team meeting. So we had bi-weekly meetings that were getting, let's be honest, super dry. Like I'm sure you know, a lot of online meetings after one another, not so much fun. So we added themes, we added costumes so that it was, you wanted to go to this meeting. You were enjoying seeing the silly person in a pirate hat or the hard hat, whatever that costume might've been. And that goes again, themes make everything fun. So one of my colleagues has a grade six uh, daughter and her teacher the whole year is doing a Harry Potter theme. So everything goes back to Harry Potter. Another teacher is doing amazing race. If you can carry out a theme and make different things relate to it, it makes it a lot more fun. Kids know what they can expect. They can buy into the theme. They can make costumes themselves and really commit to it. So Go to the next slide, you can see a few pictures. Just kidding, we're gonna do a chat challenge. So I want you, again, we're gonna rapid fire. I'm only gonna give people 10 seconds because I wanna move on to the next thing, but what are different themes that we can do? Just pop them in the chat as soon as you have them. What are different themes? Wacky hair day, yes. Imagine how much fun showing up to your class and seeing your classmates all in wacky hair. Sports, big time. You can stretch out sports forever. Dream job. Sort idols, superheroes, anything else? What else can we do? Decades, that's an awesome one. PJ Day colors, cultural heritage, I love that. All right, so again, here's another bank of ideas that you can use for your themes. And I love how superheroes in the chat because that is one of the week. So this is with younger kids, but they made their costumes. So they got little finger gloves and put pom-poms on. Now you have a superhero costume. If you buy into it as the facilitator, your kids are gonna buy in. On the bottom there, it's a space adventure. So you changed your background in Zoom. We have one person who was from NASA and was taking the kids to the moon. But on the way to the moon, an alien stopped them and made them go through all these challenges in order to get to the moon. So the kids had to work together in breakout rooms, had to come up with the answers to these trivia questions or whatever it might have been to make the alien happy. And that was their challenge for the day. The one there on the top right hand side is stuffy day. So if you've ever worked with younger kids and asked them to bring in their stuffy, they can talk for hours and hours about their stuffy. But you can change it up and say, measure your stuffy. How long is your stuffy? Write a story about your stuffy. Toss your stuffy up and down. Throw the stuffy. See how quickly you can get it. You can make everything and anything about your stuffy. And these are just some quick examples of how you can use themes and costumes to your advantage in online programming. The next thing I want to talk to you about, still on that sense of fun, is get them moving, get them competing. We know how long kids are sitting in their chairs, looking at screens, not getting up and moving. Like Olu said, he has that one girl who just sits and stares at her feet all day. But let's get our kids up, let's get them moving. Working in teams can have them race against each other. You can have them work together, which can often heighten their focus and channel their energy for that next activity. 
once you get them moving, sometimes they release that pent up energy. They break up the pace of the session, right? And we all know the importance of physical health and getting kids moving. Not, I wanna say none of our kids right now are getting their uh, daily recommended amount of physical activity. So if you can just get them up, get their heart racing just even a little bit, you're impacting their lives tremendously in a positive way. One thing I do wanna say is if you are not trained to do a workout video, don't even try it. Our group tried it. I have the most embarrassing video of me in my basement just like huffing and puffing, trying to do exercises. It's not my thing. It's not why I'm here. If it's not your niche, don't bother. There are so many online videos that you can just take and show your class. Do what works well for you. Do what you're good at. Don't try to be somebody else. Be yourself and have fun with it. You can see a bunch of games here listed on the side. At the end, we're actually going to give you a resource that has a ton of virtual games that you can use. And these are listed in there. So things like a dance challenge, everybody jump at once. Um, all these games will be listed in that resource. But we are going to play one game. I'm going to pass it off to Olu to take us through A Pirate's Life. All right. So this is a game that I grew up playing in the gym. And I really love the game. So I tried to figure out a way that we could still play it at home. Um, so basically, it's also known as like ship shore or north, south, east, west. You may have played it under different names. But basically, I'm going to have a series of four commands, right? So there's going to be ship, right? So if I say ship, what you're going to have to do is disappear to the left of your camera, all right? And if I say shore, you disappear to the right of your camera. If I say swab the deck or all hands on deck, you got to disappear below the camera. So sadly, a lot of us are going to have to stand up if, if, you, if you're willing to. And then if I say captain's coming, you got to stand and salute. All right. So now this game, like it sort of works on like the Simon Says tip where, you know, if you're last, you're out. Or if you go the wrong way, you're out. And then to keep kids engaged, if they're out, they can help become, you know, the, the police or something to help you. Uh, choose who's the next one out. Or if you don't want it to be competitive, if you don't have a group of competitive kids, just have them running all over the place like headless chicken, you know, ship shore, ship shore, up, down, up, down. All right, you guys are ready. Let me see some thumbs up. Stand up, we're gonna go through this really, really quickly. All right. So just in case you guys don't remember, this way is ship, this way is shore, down there is swab the deck, and then captain's coming. You gotta salute. All right. Here we go. Ship. Good. Shore. Good. Captain's coming. Good. Swap the deck. Good. Shore. Ah, that was ship. <laughs> ship. Shore. Captain's coming. Swap the deck. Captain's coming. Good, 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 good. Okay, so I'll cap it there. But you can see how even even if you're sitting, doing this, you're still you're still gonna gonna work up a bit of work there, right? Trying to disappear between the cameras. So that was one of my favorite games. Figured out a way to make it virtual, so I was happy about that. Thanks for getting us up and moving, Olu. Um, the next part I'm gonna talk about is going on the more depressing side. So we just talked about all these amazing things that we can do as caring adults to get kids moving, to make them feel safe. But here's the reality of what's happening during COVID. So we've seen 106% increase in reports of suspected child sexual exploitation. We've seen mental health issues increase for everybody. We've seen mothers have rates of depression increase from 9% to 34 to 43%. Domestic violence has increased. And this is no surprise to anyone, I'm sure, but the economic and food insecurity has increased. And there has also been studies that have found that health impacts from quarantine can last up to three years. Yet, reporting of child abuse has gone down 26 to 40%. Why do you think that is? Unmute yourself, type it into the chat. Why do you think all these things are happening negatively, but reports of it aren't increasing?
well, there's less people to report right. to begin with. Right? What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, like, uh, you know, while everything's going on regularly, kids are uh, involved in a lot of extracurriculars yeah. at times, right? And so then you have a lot more eyes on them. Yeah, you, you have a lot more, you know, people they trust invested in their lives. And without that, now they're secluded and self-contained, right? All of us are. So yes. they're a lot more confined in that sense. You're a hundred percent spot on. So in regular in-person program programming, kids have caring adults that they see after school or at their extracurriculars, like you said. But right now, we're so focused on just getting through the online content, or they're not involved in online programming. I don't think it's fun. Or they're not going to be with their friends. They're not being seen by caring adults. There's not caring adults who are there to report. And if they are involved in caring program or caring adults programs, we're so focused on those outcomes. We're so focused on making sure that, you know, we're getting through it, that there's no tech issues, that we feel good about ourselves after the program, that we're forgetting to intentionally look at our kids and do wellness checks and make sure that we are a caring adult in their life and notify somebody if something is wrong. So what I just want to make a call for is to understand that we are probably the only people who have eyes on these kids and we need to make it an intentional part of our sessions to see how they're doing. And I don't mean like in an awkward forum in a large group like this of us being like, tell me how you're doing today. Share with me all your intimate secrets that you're never going to want to tell everybody, but do it in a huge group. I do it in a way where you can actually share and you can tell the kids to share in a non-threatening fun way. And one of these games that we're going to do. So this game is basically, as you see, is if my life were a movie, it would be called. So basically all you, all you do here is you talk to the kids and it depends if you see them a couple of times a week, you can change how long you want their movie title to be from but if you're like us and you see them once a week you say if your life were a movie this week what would be the name of that movie and you tell them it does not need to be a real name it doesn't need to be a Hollywood name like for example mine would be my life were a movie be called the couch potato because I sat on the couch all day and yesterday was the first time I went outside all right so uh, what I would like you guys to do is just like before I'm going to give you guys 25 seconds to type out the name of your of your movie for this week and then and we'll see what everybody's movie name is all right go for it All right, everyone hit enter in three, two, one. All right, eat, sleep, Zoom call, repeat. I like that one. The unknown outside world, stress city, population, me. <laughs> I forgot to get out of my chair this week. Job applications unlimited. Slow, slow days of a 14 day quarantine in New Brunswick. Home away from home. So exactly, you can see how funny that gets and you can get kind of like a, an idea into how they're feeling. Like all of us need to get outside. <laughs> so I'll pass that back off. Thanks, Olu. To, so no you can take a screenshot of that chat and you can see if anything is just slightly concerning to you that you can check in with that youth after the fact. You give them a call, talk to their parents, see how things are going, ask them to get on the phone and you can do a more intimate check-in if you see something alarming that comes up. And another assessments here to make assessments fun, to get that feedback. So you can do that movie title activity to, like Olu said, see where people are sitting. There's other games that you can do as well. So I'm gonna get everybody to get an item that is green, an item that is red, and an item that is yellow. All right, and we are going to play a game called Grab and Go. So a green item, a yellow item, and a red item. And show me in your camera once you have them. It doesn't have to be exact. It can be a blue. If you only have a blue, that's fine. Perfect.
Wonderful. All right, while everybody's grabbing those items or finishing up, I see a bunch of them in the cameras, which is great. This game is called Grab and Go. So it's very similar to Simon Says. Um, I'm going to say head. Everyone's gonna touch their head, shoulders, knees, whatever. And then I'm gonna say grab. But I'm gonna start off each time by saying, how did you like something? And let's say we just did programming and we learned how to do a layup. And I'll say, how did you find the layup practice today? And then I'll say head, knees, shoulders, nose, grab. Then you'll show me in your camera if you really liked it, if you kind of liked it, but it wasn't your favorite, or if you absolutely hated that activity. All right, so I want everybody to stand up and try it out with me. So I want you to have your items in front of your camera here, just on the ground. I'm gonna say, how did you like the scavenger hunt activity? Ready? Shoulders, elbows, nose, ears, knees, toes, grab. All right. So I just at a glance saw very quickly that we're fans of scavenger hunts. So now next week when I see everybody, I know I'm gonna make us do a scavenger hunt again. Um, uh, how do you feel about the speech, the five minute speech that I'm gonna make you do at the end of the session? I'm not really gonna do that, but how would you feel about a speech? Ready? Knees, hips, wiggle your hips, wiggle your hips. Uh, do the disco, grab your ears, grab your nose, grab your ears, grab your nose, knees, toes, grab. All right, so we got some half that not doing a speech, some yellows that you, I could convince you to do a speech, um, but that is essentially grab and go. That is a very quick assessment that we can do to see if kids are liking your program or liking some of these activities. Another more formative assessment that we can do is called daring doodle. So if you are actually doing like lecture-based stuff, you can ask the kids what they've learned today by asking them to draw it. So instead of surprising kids with pop quizzes or a typical quiz structure, you can ask them to draw the ideas down on a piece of paper or write them. So if I gave everybody two minutes now, I'm not going to, but if I asked you to draw out what you learned from this session, maybe you would write something about safety or wellness checks or costumes or make it fun. And then you ask them to show the screen and you can, again, take a screenshot of that and you can see what people are learning. If you saw anybody that said online learning sucks and I should only ever do virtual programming, you can't do sports from an online platform, well then you know like, that person did not get what I was trying to teach today. I need to check them and make sure they're on track. So again, these are just fun and easy ways that you can make assessments a little less structured, but a lot more fun. Sorry, everyone, my mute button is <laughs> for some reason. It's very odd. Um, so assessments should be fun, um, but <laughs> it's still really important that we collect data as well. Um, and so it's important for us to make assessments accessible and actionable. Um, engagement is a valuable, valid, and actual outcome that we actually need to track. Um, in a similar way that we did with our learning outcomes pre-pandemic. At Launchpad, we've used this virtual engagement survey uh, in more of a challenge format than actually just sending out a survey that really just allows us to get a quick hit of important indicators of engagement. Um, and it really allows us to see what part of engagement we're doing well and maybe some parts that we need to focus on a little bit more and, and have some improvement in really approach engagement outcomes as seriously as you approach learning outcomes like self-esteem and critical thinking because engagement is the foundation of everything that you do. Learn to walk before you try to run. Youth need to trust their coaches, they need to feel heard, they need to be safe, and they need to feel that they belong before we can expect them to learn any life skills or to participate fully in our programming. And once you can consistently show high engagement, then you can layer on those additional outcomes. 
Um, but you can always go back to your foundation of engagement if you spent the time to develop it. You can't do that if you haven't spent that time building that solid foundation of trust and psychological safety and relationships. Because in the end, when you work with youth, you're in the business of relationships and trust and safety and fun. Um, and really you wanna focus on that first and then you'll create the environment in which we can do all the incredible things that we write papers about and get articles written about and have presentations at conferences. We can't do any of those things without that foundation of engagement. So on that note, we are um, through all of our content in what I think is an impressive speed that we didn't think was possible. Um, so we have some time now. At first, I wanna make sure that Sonia, do you have any announcements you wanna make? And then we'll get into some questions just so we make sure we have time for those. Yeah, for sure. I'll drop all of these things in the chat. Um, but first of all, a big, big thank you. If we can put our hands together virtually for Jackie, uh, Jamie and Olu for leading us through this session. Um, I, I know I certainly walked away with lots of tangible tools and tips and games we can take into activities. So I think that's really, really great. And you got us all up and moving too. So it worked with us. So I'm sure it'll work in our, in our programs as well. Um, one thing we'll ask you to fill out a quick survey as Jackie was talking about assessment. Um, so I'll drop that into the chat if you can give us some feedback, um, anything that we can learn um, moving forward and how to keep running these in a way that's uh, useful for you. Um, we'll also be sending out a reminder, uh, sorry, an email with all of the links and resources that uh, were shared in the workshops today, as well as a summary of the sessions that you may have not had a chance to join into, uh, and we are recording them, so that will be made available after the workshop. Um, and then lastly, I will drop into the chat again the, the link for our virtual coffee chats. We really encourage you to, um, you know, link up with someone. Uh, you know, if you have questions for our speakers that there's not time to get into today or like to have a deeper conversation, um, you know, we encourage you to reach out to them and uh, we'll, there'll be a special gift uh, for that as well. But otherwise, just watch out for um, all of those links in the chat and the follow up email. And thank you again to our speakers. Thank you so much, Sonia. Um, and again, thank you to all of us, to, for all of you guys for listening to us for the last uh, 50 minutes, 50 plus minutes now. Um, because we have seven minutes left, uh, we wanna take this opportunity to actually let you guys ask any questions or comments um, that you have. And, Feel free um, to unmute yourself now and uh, ask us any questions that you have. I have a question. Yeah. Um, I'm a PhD student at Western and I really wanna focus on my research on like bridging the gap between academia and practitioners of sport for development. Like there's a lot of work being done by researchers in academia and uh, researchers in evaluation in um, practitioners and programming and things like that. What's the, what do any of you, whoever wants to answer, think the best way to bridge that gap is between academia um, and practitioners? Yeah, so I can, I can take that because it's a lot. Um, that's basically my job is to, <laughs> or, or my team's job as well as the two other members on um, my research team, Marika and Brian. Um, and my suggestion would be uh, there is to find a champion in community. If you're in academia, um, find people to work with that are actually in community, you know, make connections with people like myself or with Jamie um, who are program practitioners, right? The idea is that, um, uh, research that comes from the top down uh, is not not usually responsive to what's actually happening on the ground. And so um, starting at the bottom um, with everyone else that's there uh, really helps to make your research grounded in the experience of the youth that you're working for or adults in the case of um, not necessarily youth programming, um, but really uh, getting a champion in the um, that you can work with uh, and not work and work with and work for. Um, and, and have them guide your research more so than um, making a proposal that way. I don't know if anyone else has anything to add. I can add in just a little bit. Um, I know, especially during COVID, a lot of us had to 
find research. So a lot of us practitioners are like, oh crap, we know nothing, we need to learn. Um, and a large part of our role is researching best practices and trying to understand what research has been done. Um, so understanding where to look for those things, how to get it in hands of practitioners so you're not just doing the research, feeling like, oh yeah, I did something, I published, now I'm awesome, um, but actually connecting, like Jackie said, to a practitioner who can take your work and run with it um, because practitioners are always looking for research. We don't just like go out and say, yeah, this might work, maybe use our fingers and hope, um, but we actually do look for that research. So if you're able to connect, then it just makes the world a lot easier. I have a question. Uh, so first of all, thank you uh, all for preparing this workshop. I uh, really learned a lot in terms of like on the ground strategies. And I, I think you all brought together really good virtual engagement, like when you're with the kids and with the with whoever you're working with. Now, my question is thinking about community programming and it's how difficult it is to even first get kids onto the screen and then even have them continue to come back. From your experiences, what would be your main recommendation for clubs that are working with you? Um, not only just engagement in terms of like creating an engaging session, but how do you get youth to keep coming back? Because we've been finding what like, Boys and Girls Clubs in Canada and whatever different clubs sites we go, keep losing members engaging I we can create it um so jay's care has actually done a few um sessions for boys and girls clubs so i hope you were able to take advantage of that if not please connect with me afterwards um we do a recruitment session because you're right to get them just involved once they getting them through the door is the biggest thing um, and then to keep them in the door is really to make that hook. So to make that thing that they love, that they're going to come back for, whether that's a game, a person, your attitude, whatever it is. But if you take the time at the start of your session to do ground rules and to do icebreakers and learn what those kids like and involve programming every day, instead of just having that skeleton template that you're gonna do this kind of a game and you're gonna do this, but you incorporate their likes, what they wanna see. And if you hook them at the end of the session of saying like, all right, I know a lot of you like basketball, so don't worry, next week when we all get together, I'm gonna to make sure we do a basketball activity. And you learn what their hook is and get them to come back. Um, I think starting your session and ending your session, the most fun, uh, like a sandwich or a hamburger, like have buns, be the most fun, the most in depth with your kids will be the key to having kids return time and time and again. Yeah, and I think off that too, uh, goes back to our conversation about being kind to yourself. Um, I know from a launch pad perspective, attendance was an issue in person. <laughs> uh, we had about an attendance rate of 50%. Youth came to 50% of our programs. And, and that meant if we ran a nine week cycle, they only came four or five times, um, which we took as, okay, if we can just keep them at that, that's a win, right? And so now it's like, they have a whole different context that they're living in. There's so many different um, factors. And so be kind to yourself and be kind to your, if you put the time to making, making sure your program program is fun, and checking in with your kids that your program is fun and they find it fun, then if they don't show up, it's not, it might not be because your program is not what they want. It might be that the context they're living in right now makes it challenging. Um, a lot of families are dealing with single, single device. Um, some kids are on school virtually all the time, particularly for high school aged youth. Um, and they don't want to after school go on an hour program. And that's okay. You know, we have to, we have to be kind to ourselves too we focus on making our program engaging, then we know we've done what we can um, and build those relationships, they will come back. Um, it just might not be in the frequency we always want them to. So I realize that we're at 1130. Um, so you guys are free to um, take off and resume your days. Um, as you want. And again, thank you guys so much. Um, feel free to send us uh, 
link up for those coffee chats again we are more than happy to have conversations i see there are some connections happening in the chat as well already without us which tier you guys don't want to include us but it's okay i'm glad that's happening um but uh definitely take some take some time and and us afterwards our emails are all in that in that doc as well so um please feel free to send us an email if you have any more questions and, and thank you guys so much Tanya, can you stay? Oh my gosh. <laughs> hey. Thanks for joining. Have a good weekend. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry, I'm just gonna awkwardly be here and tell everybody to leave. <laughs> this is like the goodbye piece. What a fun debrief we're gonna have. Jamie, how was it? I think it went well. I good. Think it went well. Your awesome, I'm awesome. glad. I'm oh, good, I'm glad. Yeah. So good. Thank you everybody. You, you all are free to leave. I hope you enjoyed the workshop. We will be following up with you via email on, with all the relevant links, recordings, and a summary of each workshop. Have a good weekend. Thanks, Rashika. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Alex, stay back. Thanks, guys. Take care. Thanks. Brian, can you stay back too? Bye, Bye everyone else. Guys. Bye, Fern. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Alicia. Great job. Bye. Thank you. Um, I wonder if anybody else is still here. Uh, no, I think it's us. Okay, sorry. Before you guys jump into your conversation, how are you guys doing? <laughs> Good, my friend. Okay. Great. Great. How are you guys doing? As the three, Alex, this question is for you. Um, Kier, Zach, and Olu. It's just, just these three. Uh, it's just these hours that they did, right? No, no, no. Anything? No, I need to send you more. I'll send it to you today. Don't worry. Okay, no worries. Okay, Thanks, bye, guys. Bye. Okay, no problem. Bye. Bye, Sonia. Bye, Sonia. Oh. Hey. Oh, all right, I thought you were <laughs> <laughs> So friends, how was it? Um sorry, Thorshika, we're still recording, Wally. Oh, um who had some who had